Welcome to, I guess, I, for, I lost count. I'd say about 171. The Premier Pro podcast, the Rankcast teaser. Number 171. I, I never make any bones about it. I come straight at you with it. Uh, help us keep the doors open. Subscribe to our Patreon. You can stream our weekly podcast, uninterrupted, commercial free, for two bucks. What you get for that two bucks is unbelievable. Because Casey, James, and I are probably the youngest guys that finally ended up somewhere, been there, done that. You know, there's not too much that happens today in pro wrestling with even your top guys that our thumbprint is on or we are connected to it somehow, you know. Even the top guys with World Wrestling Entertainment, you know. Um, the $4 tier gets you the podcast uninterrupted and commercial free. And every main event from every Saturday night, because that's what we do. For Premier Pro, we have a studio comboed with our training facility. So we run, because part of training is you have to be able to work in front of a crowd. Any idiot today, and there's so many idiots out there that think they can show you how to take a bump and do a spot and imitate what you see on YouTube or the clips of the week on Insta, but there's no qualified wrestling schools in our area anyway, and that's Chicagoland or the Midwest. Here, that's what we do. You get to a point where you're training, and you can only learn so much in a camp setting. You've got to be in front of people. Bottom line, you know? Also, the $6 tier gets you the aforementioned, our incredible library, which has got to be almost 500 matches. It's got to be. Probably more. That aren't available anywhere else. We don't put them on YouTube. We stream them. Now, we're also on Pivot Share. Pivot Share is acting weird lately, and aside from that, with Pivot Share, we just don't get a big enough amount of money as a creator, you know. But we're going to stay there because some of you guys are comfy subscribing and streaming on pivot share but if you would be so kind man i think this is the best money you could spend on anything currently on wrestling content as far as wrestling content goes on patreon i guess what i would also classify as in the comedy part two because people really support comedy on patreon and some of the shit we do is fucking funny man i'm a funny motherfucker right even you who snug as shit <laughs> You're not. You thought you were on the nipple. You, you <laughs> that just was got, the nipple. You, no, that was areola. <laughs> it's actually my bad breast. You know this breast. So when I was a kid, I, I always was told before I got into wrestling, you're too small. Give it up. Focus on this or that. Because I was tall and thin. Uh -huh. So this one guy says to me, "I can get you some D-ball." Nothing to do with wrestling. This guy wasn't a bodybuilder. You know. So he gets me this fucking D-ball, and uh, I took that shit wrong. Uh, you know, I was taking uh, one a day, one the first day, two. I worked up to like six a day till it was gone. Smart. And I blew up with water. Unbelievable. Because I was taking way too much of that bullshit. <laughs> and I had developed a cyst in this breast. Ooh. Yeah, so I had to get it removed. So you think you got a nipple, but really you were dabbling an areola edge of the nipple. Uh, you know... Whatever, as long as you're close. Horseshoes, hand grenades, and uh, touching nipples, as long as you're close. Well, I'm just letting you know, you know, like when, if and when you ever get laid again, you got to be able to find what you're looking for. Oh, I'll be on it like a crack whore <laughs> in the <my cock. laughs> No, that's a little too much, even for me. Anyway, uh, we kind of mumbled that, so we're going to leave it anyway. But it, it, for, what it is, for what it's worth, it's funny. So we talk about all kind of shit. And one thing we, you and I talked about, and I don't give a fuck about putting over podcasts for people that deserve it. You motherfuckers, you, you people watching, subscribing to our shit or not, just watching the shit. If you're a true fan of the wrestling industry and not the spot of the week type fan that tries to find their, with no respect, their actual real love for the industry, you have got to listen to Briscoe and Bradshaw. That's the shit. That's yeah, the podcast, man. I'm not sure what they're selling, where they they figured the revenue because YouTube fucks you so bad. And they're probably going somewhere with it because neither one is stupid. Yeah. But on the other hand, both have enough money to rest on the laurels. But that's where you get like the truth. 
you know, there's so much truth in there and the history of the industry, you know. Even if you're an indie it an indie it hmm. hmm. you idiots if you could just open your minds even like a pubic hair and listen, you're gonna learn something. You could you can actually maybe rise above the indie it uh indie it uh what do you call it when you're just average? Oh, mediocre. The mediocrity of the, being an idiot, you know. Amazing. It's amazing. And they get the best guests on there. You know, that stuff is really going to be worth something someday. Uh, and they're getting these guys while they can get them, while they're still alive and have their somewhat enough of their wits about them to fucking tell you that have been there, done that. The greatest promoters in history, Jerry Jarrett, Bill Watts. And, and you can check the gates on it. They are the most successful promoters in history, along with Greg Gagne, uh, the son and also strategic partner who was there every step of the way with Vern Gagne, who, again, these guys drew more rest, more, they sold more tickets than anybody today can ever dream of selling as performers, but also a lot of the guys, the smarter guys that get out of the way and and <coughs> developed actual real talent, you know, amazing. Anyway, what I want to do this week is talk about some of the parallels. And I have had such a funky ass life, and it started before pro wrestling. But since I've been in the wrestling industry, I think it's been thirty five years, thirty four years. Uh, when I listened to the podcast with Jerry, I saw where I was fixed into. The big picture, mm -hmm. and I ne it never hit me before. In the podcast with Jerry, they talk about things like, uh, but one of the things that they touch on is, you know, the way the the business went, where we are today. We're the only real viable wrestling promotion in the United States and probably the world right now. The only place a pro wrestler can make a decent living and be able to count on said living, not this Tony Khan, let's get paid as much as we can before the guy folds, because I've seen it happen, and it's going to happen. He's doing what WCW did exactly. Uh, how we got there, you know? And the actual opportunities that Jerry had at certain points in certain places where before, did you know that, be and I, I didn't know this, but now it makes sense when I look back on it, and the things that I saw occurred to me. At one point, Jerry had the first option to be on ESPN and USA Network before WWE mm, was, okay. you know, which is unbelievable. You can only imagine what that was like. Yeah. So what I'd like to talk about is this, you know, I worked that territory, Memphis, and little did I know it was going to be the last of the full-time wrestlers. We wrestled every night of the week and TV. TV we wrestled for free in Memphis. We did live TV. Not because live TV was breaking and cutting edge, it was because live TV was cheap, <laughs> you yeah. know? And that was the deal, you know, you had to be there. And you wanna talk about, I mean, it was the number one rated program in seven markets, 11 markets, I can't remember. But uh, we were on Saturday mornings at 10 p.m. right after the Smurfs, which was like the biggest mm. television show, you know, on Saturday mornings. Sure. So. That being said, um, from there, uh, I left for a while and then I came back. And then one day out of the blue, my whole thing was to end up working in Memphis because I loved working every night. I just fucking loved it, you know. And I think, I can't remember which run came first now that I think about it. I ended up back in Memphis. But the bottom line to it is this. I get a call one day out of the blue from the guy who originally booked me and one of the most successful bookers of all time. And you talk about creative and every fan thing, every sick fan thinks they can be the head of creative and their ideas are gonna take the nation by storm if they can only be heard. No, you may have some decent ideas, but you don't know unless you work with people that have been there and done that. So one of the best bookers and probably a self, really selfish talent, uh, Bill Dundee. And I get a call out of the blue Sunday, it's one day, and hey, mate, it's Billy. Can you be in Memphis? Uh, can you be in Dallas on Friday? We're taking over. You and me are going to be the top babyface tag team, and Jeff Jarrett's going to be the top babyface. 
says, well, yeah, sure. A day or two notice, I shot down there, you know. And then the rest is history. A whole bunch of crazy happened. But at that time, what was so cool about it, what finally occurs to me, man, is in Jerry's, Jerry's recollections, during that time frame, he had me figured in to be one of the top pricks or semi-main mm-hmm. on a national level. And mm-hmm. we're talking about the possibility of being on USA and at the time ESPN now what was great about that is this in no way shape or form am I saying I was 100% ready but Jerry knew me well enough mentally emotionally and watched my matches you know working for him he knew that they could groom me by teaming me with Dundee Mm -hmm. and putting me against the rock and roll RPMs Mike Davis and Kevin Dillinger to season me and get me ready man yeah so that was great so that's what we're going to talk about this week. And like I says, go to the Briscoe and Bradshaw podcast on YouTube. They're doing it for free. And the podcasts are amazing. They're 100, uh, uh, I'm sorry, an hour and 45 minutes to two hours, you know, with not many ads. Very, most of the ads on there are skippable, but it's so compelling. And you can fact check me too when we talk about the dates and when Jerry starts talking about all that stuff. And also, how I was tied into and the opportunities that did come before me back when uh, the, the government went after Vince McMahon for the steroid uh, scandal and how unfounded at the end of the day that was, you know. So, there we go. Uh, before we dip out, you can support us on Patreon. Also, Premier Pro Wrestling and Pro Wrestling Tees. I gave CM Punk, and you can fact check me on this, his first handful of professional matches. And Casey James worked with him as a performer under contract for WWE down in OVW when it was a feeder for World Wrestling Entertainment. So on Red Bubble, we have a shirt. It's a beautiful shirt, and everybody gets the point because the way the shirt is designed, I stand with Punk.